heute in, uh, über, über unser Thema zu reden, Godly Encounters. Today I'm really excited to talk about the topic um, Godly Encounters and Encounters that matter. So, jede Krise hat. Jede Krise hat einen so every crisis there is a low point aufwärts. and then it goes so up again. Auch mit Corona gehen. It's also going to be the same for COVID-19. We're probably on Aber the upward trend right now. Ist es, wenn wir unten durch sind but it would be a really sad thing haben. if we were to be at this liebe, bottom point, but we didn't really experience Menschen, anything. For people who fear God, rechnen, God, we can always count that God would use these situations to, be, to, to teach us something. It's like a pattern in the Bible where, where God encounters such people in the lowest point of life and shows them something. We're going to a story today, not just about where the disciples of Jesus actually went into the lowest point of their lives and that happened in, in the Sea of Galilee in John 21. So the Sea of Gal Galilee is really a one of the lowest points, 209 meters below sea level. It's interesting because it's one of the lowest lying sweet water um, lakes around, and it still produces water. Fresh, refreshing water. I like how 18 of the 33 miracles that Jesus performed were done around this sea. That shows that God really works in the lowest point of life. In this story that we're going in, we see how the disciples are really in, in, this, in this soul. They're really at the lowest point of their lives. The hope, the hope that they would be able to see the Messiah coming into this world and, and working something is basically gone. In John 21, it starts. But he encountered them in some way, in this way. And we're really going to jump into this scene, literally. I hope it works, technically. Let's do it. Simon Peter speaks to the disciples. I'm going to fish. We'll go with you, they said. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. That's verse 2 and verse 3. I actually looked it in the Greek dictionary. In German, it says nothing, or in English, it says nothing. In all languages, it says basically they caught nothing, not a single fish. Early in the morning, verse 4, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So when they did, they da weren't able to pull the net in because of the large number of fish. Nicht mehr wegen der Menge der Fische. Da der Jünger, then the disciple Jesus whom liebhatte, Jesus loved said to Peter, Johannes, It is the Lord. Petrus, es ist der Herr. It is the es Lord. Ist der Herr. Petrus as soon as Simon Peter, Peter Heard him say, okay, sorry. Simon Peter hasn't really arrived into this new reality yet. He's still somewhere else. He hadn't even really understood the fact that Jesus has risen, that the new reality of the kingdom of God has come into play. That's why he says, I'm going to fish. Because he didn't know how it was going, what was happening next. He went back to the things he, he felt most comfortable with, whatever gave him security. The boat represents his financial security. He knew how he was going to get, get, get live off that, and, he, and it also went that way. 
It also represented his, his, his earlier adventures, his company with other fishers, this friendship he built up over those days. This boat also represents his, his sense of purpose in his life. Because this whole thing with Jesus has been over, is, is over, and, or at least he thought so. And he went back to the place where he felt he had a sense, a sense of, lip, of purpose. And somehow this wasn't really, wasn't really working out. And maybe people would say like, this whole concept of discipleship that Jesus had with, with Peter didn't really work out. Because Jesus wanted to take him away from his boat. As he called Simon Peter, he told him, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. You're not a fisher who fishes fishes, well, but a fisher of men wanted to bring Peter away from his, his boat. We read later in a story where Jesus brings him to the water, calls him out to the water, because he knows it's not meant for the boat, but for to go on the water. Even this experience didn't really suffice for Peter to say, for Simon Peter to say, I'm going to take what's, come, what, what's new installed for me. He said, I'm going to go fishing instead. Jesus always wanted to sink this boat metaphorically of Peter. He gave him the name Pephas, Petrus, from Simon to, Pe to Peter. It really means a, a rock, a rock basically sinks a ship, a rock doesn't fit into a ship. But Peter says, I'm going to fish. God had something new installed, but Peter, but Peter didn't really get that. It's not a new concept that Jesus wants to do. God wants to do something new, but we humans don't get it. Isaiah says in, Isaiah says in verse 43, 19, Look, I'm making something new, and it's growing. See, I'm doing a new thing, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Peter didn't understand there was a new phase of life, and he just went back to what he was used to. They all, you didn't have to be a prophet. If you look at the coronavirus situation and you look back and you look in front, you would say maybe we're not going back to normalcy that we've been used to. The world, society has changed, new values, new mentalities, new ways of doing things have, have been established. If we, were just, if we were just to simply think we're going to go back to the safe place we were used to, then we're most likely going to be really frustrated, as with Peter experienced, that's how Peter experienced this emptiness. There's something new, there's this new grace. Every new day brings a new grace from God. His mercy is new every morning, at least in English. We don't have to do something new. We don't have to do something every day a new day breaks because the grace of God is, we don't, we don't earn it. Grace is not a theological concept. We find it in the person of Jesus Christ. He is, Jesus is alive, living. He's reality. That's why we can, whenever we start a new chapter, we can find a new grace. We can find a new grace to go into these new times. Because for many of us, it's a huge stress. It's how the worlds change. 
und mit gewissem Maße unsere and Sicherheit, how it is wie wir es uns gewohnt waren, die Dinge, die the, wir vertraut the, the waren, security, die Dinge, die in the things that we've deemed as secure in our lives, dass die irgendwie nicht mehr somehow they don't fit into this new model that we have we've we've been establishing. But I believe God is behind all these. Grace, it's like a new software, it's like a new operating system that's installed and, and started so that things work better. The New Testament is something like a new operating system so we don't have to work according to the law. It's not a theological concept, but it's also an atmosphere where you come in where you can blossom in a new way. And also say like for everything that's coming, that's new, that's coming, we have a new need for grace. My question to you is, do you still, do you live like that? Or do you still live in the old times? As, as Simon Peter did. The difficult thing about a new day, a new grace, new mercy, is the new, we haven't just ex we haven't experienced that yet. We're not we're not secure in that yet. We don't have experience in that. The grace that's already present there for you, it's the one that's already needed for us to start into a new day. But it's because it's unknown to us, we as humans, we like to go back to things that we are familiar with. For Peter, Simon Peter was this boat. Er hat sich total entblößt auf diesem Schiff. Stellt euch vor, hier ist er mit seinen Freunden, so, mit Jüngern, und er hat ihnen gesagt, lass uns fischen hey, let's, let's do, let's go fishing, at least this is thing, something we can do. But this time, he didn't actually, didn't actually work for him, because it was a new day. But he was not in a new grace. He just did whatever he knew previously. And he really worked a lot for that. It was almost embarrassing because he couldn't catch any fish. He was faced with this emptiness, emptiness in this net, and also inner, inner emptiness, where he came to a point, an absolute low point in his life, a downer in his life. Somehow, I don't really fit into this anymore, he would think. Somehow, I don't, I don't work as I used to. It was this emptiness, this coming to sensors, senses, that this old sense of security, not the safest, it wasn't the safest place. You know, the safest place is not where you're most familiar. It's not a place where you're, you're feeling secure. It's always the will of God, wherever God calls you to, wherever God has given you grace for. At the same time, I don't want to say like whatever is familiar is bad, definitely not. But it's always a bad option compared to the grace that is given to you new every day. And we don't know that yet. We don't know this grace yet. I like to go into a text, a verse, where, where it, because for Peter, it actually just stopped there. It just blocked. It was blocked with him. Are we still living the old things when God is doing something new? In verse 7, John 21, verse 7, Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard that, heard him say that, it is the Lord who wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from, sh from shore, about a hundred yards. Something happened here. 
There's a transition from the old life to the new life. Something like the rising of the sun. Where, where, where Simon Peter actually understands that and he says, I want to be part of that. The first thing he does is he leaves his boat and he jumps into the water. He was called to be a, a man of faith. The other people, other disciples stayed in the boat, but he finally left his boat and he knew I had to go to Jesus. The second important point is this transition from old to new, where it actually dawned upon him. The thing he actually worked for, whatever was important to him before, he left it behind, his fishing and all. He just passed it on to his disciples, other disciples, the other disciples. The the blessing that I got from Jesus is less important than the person that gave it to me, namely Jesus. Jesus is more important than whatever he gives me. All the, all the great things he's given me, the promises, blessings, things that we receive when we follow Jesus, they're not as important as Jesus himself. And what, I believe whatever we can learn from here, the thing that we can learn from here is that Grace has a lot to do with letting go. I know many movements that hold the grace of God really high. That we should just accept this grace of God. I believe we can just get this grace of God really easy because it's new every day. The question is, can you let go of whatever is behind and, and really embrace the thing that God has prepared you for today? Letting go is really important. We talk about encounters with God these, in this series. Some people think it's very mystical. It's, it's something very dependent on God. If he wants to show himself to me, he will do it. And we see in the Bible, people like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, where they had powerful encounters with God. But a clear path shows that it's always where people have made the first step. When they come towards him, that's where God showed himself to them. And the key is for them to actually let go of things. That's the main point. Things that were important in their lives, important for the preferences from the ideology as to how God should work, as how life should work. Because in the Bible says, God gives grace to the humble and resists the proud. And that's what we saw here with, with Simon Peter when it dawned upon him that he should let go. The more we let go, the more grace we experience that's valid for today and that it's a reality today. And the more we rely on grace, and the more we count on this grace, the more we will experience Jesus. I just want to read on as to how the story ends in verse 9. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples there asked him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Nachdem er aus dem Kurzen auf er war, weg war. 
I just love this picture of breakfast. It just occurred to me. When we want to understand what grace is, I hope from today you think about breakfast. Because breakfast is something we do really quite immediately after we wake up. And here Jesus prepared something. He prepared an environment for these disciples who have fought, fought hard, who have strived for the whole night. And his invitation is to be, is, is have breakfast with me. Simon Peter got his, got his caught. He left his, his whatever he caught, which was through the grace of God. He just ran, jumped off the boat, swam to Jesus. And what does he find? Fish that was ready. Fish that was prepared for breakfast. He didn't miss anything. One of the reasons why many people rather stay in that boat, why so many people don't want to let themselves be in, come into this new grace, because this new grace is something unfamiliar. Because it's better to, to trust, to rely on our strength, on our abilities. Because we think we might be able to miss, we might miss something if we trust in God, if we go His way. But this picture of breakfast is prepared for you. I like how when I'm traveling and I wake up in a hotel, you just go down into the restaurant and there is this huge breakfast buffet. I just sit down because there were people who worked for that, who prepared that hours before I came. And I just am able to partake of this. And the invitation of Jesus Christ is something that dawned upon Simon Peter. You were all, that you were always the one who took the initiative, Simon Peter. You always had to do. You always had to fight for rights. As Jesus was caught by the soldiers, he even tried to kill the soldiers. Because Simon Peter always thought that if I didn't look to something, something else wrong is going to happen. And this third encounter that he has with Jesus. This was so important that it finally dawned upon him but that when he, when he allows Jesus to come to him, when he follows Jesus, that he, has, he will see something that's prepared for him. It was such a, a decisive encounter that Simon Peter had with Jesus. So much, the, so, so much the fact that the next time we read about Simon Peter in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came in the morning and something happened. It was a new day and Simon Peter was there. Suddenly he, he saw and understood. This is the place where I'm, I'm called to be. God has prepared me for that and I can just stand in this. He didn't have to shame himself, be ashamed of himself for that, for, for denying Jesus. He could have said, I am the guy that was not worthy to be doing this. Someone else could have been doing this. But he knew it's a new day. It's a new grace. I'm going to stand up. God had prepared something for me. I can be part of this. I can put my strength, my, my trust in Jesus. I heard a really nice story about a rich man whose son died before him. That he, when he died, he had an inheritance, but no one to, to take his inheritance. And he wrote that his his wealth, his resources should be auctioned off and should be used for charitable 
deeds. Er hatte auch eine ziemlich bedeutende Kunstsammlung. Yeah, the really amazing art collection. Auktion angekündigt and as this was announced, kamen viele Menschen, die, die sich natürlich sein Kunststück many people came von bedeutenden Künstlern erfreut and wanted to see this piece of work. Und, um, der Vater oder der Mann, der wohlhabende Mann hat aber klar beschrieben in seinem Willen, guy, wie diese rich Auktion guy, vonstatten gehen soll. He wrote in his will and said, the first picture that should be auctioned off should be a portrait of an unknown painter who painted his son. This auctioner started the auction, showed the picture, and many people were quite surprised auf die bedeutenden Gemälde. Because they were waiting for the important pictures, important painting. Und niemand war für dieses Bild vom vom Sohn ist gestorben. And nobody really was interested in this picture. It was quite quiet. Nach einiger Zeit meldet sich ein Mann ganz hinten, hinten ist ein älterer Mann. Some time later, some while later. Der sagte, ja, wenn es niemand will. Someone, some guy said, if no one wants this, I'm going to take this. Stellte sich heraus, dass dieser alte Mann this old man was the butler of this, this, this rich man. He knew the son on this, on this painting. The former butler came forward, took the picture. As soon as he took it, and someone heard the hammer of the auctioner. And he said, this whole auction has been ended. And people were kind of surprised. We came for the other pictures. But then lost the auction director the will of the deceased man. But then the auctioner read his read the will of the man. He said the first first painting of that going to be auctioned. And whoever takes this portrait. To him belongs everything else. Then the love for his son. Because the love for his son. Had the wohlhabenden man also to be bewogen, that his entire vermögen to a person to trust. He wanted to bring this, give this whole all his wealth to someone who actually loved his son. His son. It's an amazing picture of of the grace of God. Who says, my son Jesus Christ. When someone loves him, when someone decides for him, everything else, whatever I have, is coming to you. It's worth something you can't earn, but you have to accept it. And not you have to accept it and not rely on your own strength. We talk about life-changing encounters in this series. There was one such encounter for Simon Peter. He left his boat. And he is a man that went new ways. He could accept this new reality. And I knew he was a man that went into grace. Whatever he worked, that shows this grace of God in his life and not his strength. I'd like to invite you to pray with me because I believe a new day has started. The question is, where are you? And I just like how Jesus didn't find it a bad idea where he where he found where he doesn't belong. Is. It shows that Jesus says like, "Hey, grace is there again for you." Many of us hold on to things that should be the way it should be, but a new day has dawned. New mercies have come that you haven't known. The boat is the wrong place for it, for grace. It's my prayer that something dawns upon you. 
I invite you to to come to your, come on you, to fall on your knees with me. The Bible says God resists the proud, but He He shows grace to the humble. Maybe we, sometimes we need crisis so that we come to the point. And I pray that we don't just experience Him in crisis, but we always have His daily low point in our life. It's not me. It's not my will, but yours. I leave everything behind, behind me. I want to pray that the next few days will be low days, low points for you, such that the whole, the, 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 the majesty of God will be shown clearly to you, such that not that grace would be wasted in your, on you or, or through you, such that God can work through you. Lord, I thank you that you show us wherever we come to our limits, where we experience our... We thank you that, that your, your, your grace is reality, that we don't have to work for it. But I want to pray that we, we get to see this, that it dawns upon us. That we don't want to live a life that was like previously, where we want to be safe and sound, but we want to be in your will, which is the safest place to be. We speak this over everyone who is watching, that we can understand again how your grace is for today. I want to pray that you leave your preferences behind. I think one of the biggest things that, help, that stop us from going to grace is the fact that we like to hold on to things the way it should be, it, that we like it. We say, hey, this is how we like it. This is how I expect it. But I believe God's grace will be experienced, can be experienced. Allows us to, to let go of our preferences. Be blessed. Grace is new every day. I pray that it dawns upon you too that way. Amen.